Amen. Thankful for what God's doing. You can be seated. Let me just quickly remind you that uh, the 28th, we will be having Brother Bear uh, with us in service Sunday morning, Sunday night. It'll be a great time for you to invite somebody to come to the house of the Lord. Amen. Friday night, uh, we do have our Life Builders Group Pastors Potluck at my house. Amen. I think we've got that all taken care of. There is child care being provided so that you can, uh, amen, uh, have, have your child taken care of. Somebody say praise the Lord. Yes, dear. It's in the foyer. Sign up food for the, uh, sign up sheet for the food is in the foyer. So if you're coming and want to participate and bring a plate, hey, somebody say Amen. I know it's a Mexican food theme. Right up my alley. And I'm thankful tonight that we're going to be able to get together, have some food, and uh, play some games. We're going to have a special guest with us, uh, brother and sister Alfin, who are missionaries to Finland. They're going to be with us. And uh, I scheduled him back, I guess, in December. Um, when they were making, you know, they kind of put pastors on the spot. The 11th chapter. I want to thank the Lord for keeping his hand on us this week. And I do want to apologize. I text. I tried to take. Did, did anybody receive my text last night? Some of you that raised your hand, you text me and ask even after I text you. So I'm going to talk to you after church. Because I'm like, did you get my text? I, I tried to text everybody that was in my phone base. Um, and if you didn't get a text, I apologize. I am going to say this. When we have weather um, challenges like we did last night, Somebody said, there was folks that came, and, and we could have come, um, but I just felt like people would better serve at home, especially on prayer night, because you can pray at home. Believe it or not, you can pray at home. I'm just trying to let y'all know that, you don't, you know, if Tuesday night's the only time y'all pray, pray, you know, or, or 10 minutes before church on service nights. Anyway, <clears throat> I thought it would be, you would be better served at home. Um, I'm going to start. We have a Facebook page, Peace Tabernacle. And so if, we, if you know there's bad weather coming and you want to know the status for the service, whether it be Sunday or, or Wednesday night, I'm going to put it on the web page, on the Facebook page. Is that okay with everybody? Or you can text me or call me. I don't mind that at all, okay? Um, that doesn't bother me, um, and uh, you know. And I'll tell you this: I know you love some of you love texting my wife. That's not a, a thing against my wife. I love my wife, um, but a lot of times you text her and she asks me because she don't know the answer. So, you know, you text me. I'll text you back. I promise. And uh, if I don't have your number, then I'll have your number. You say, well, I don't want you to have my number. But, <laughs> but no, uh, I'm going to try to make sure it's posted on the Peace Tabernacle Facebook page. That way, if you if you have a question, you can go there. Um, everybody have pretty much everybody has a computer of some sort, whether it be on your hand phone or in your house. So we're going to try to do that. Or again, call me or text me. Amen. Praise God. Second Corinthians 11, chapter the 23rd verse. Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more. In labors more abundant, in stripes above measure, in prisons more frequent, in deaths off. Of the Jews, five times received I forty stripes, save one. Thrice I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Thrice I suffered shipwreck. A night and a day I have been in the deep. In journeyings often, in perils of water, in perils of robbers, in perils by my own countrymen, in perils by the heathen, in perils in the city, 
in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren. In weariness and painfulness, in watchings often, in hunger and thirst, in fastings often, in cold and nakedness. Besides those things that are without, that which cometh upon me daily, the care of all the churches. Who is weak? And I am not weak. Who is offended? And I burn not. If I must needs glory, I will glory of the things which concern mine infirmities. The God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is blessed forevermore, knoweth that I lie not. And I, I'm going to start teaching the next few Wednesday nights on different angles of prayer. I want to talk about prayer, teach about prayer. And tonight, I, I'm going to talk on this subject, troubled prayer. Troubled prayer. Lord, I thank you for being in the house tonight. Thank you for so many coming to your house of work. I pray, God, that you'd anoint these lips of clay anoint every ear to hear, bring understanding to our mind, and we'll give you the praise and the glory in Jesus' name. Can the church say amen? Amen. God bless you. You can be seated. Now, I will tell you one of my uh, sources that I use quite often, and a lot of things that you will hear will come from this influence, um, but the works of E.M. Bounds is, is a great study work on prayer, and... Uh, I, I tell you, you you, uh, you get a different perspective on it uh, when you start reading from his thought patterns on prayer. Tremendous book. And uh, simply tonight I want to focus on troubled prayers. Paul speaks in the scripture, in the text of our writing about perils. Things that he endured. Perils there could simply be interpreted troubles. Troubles in our life we know are trials. Things that we go through. Claudius Shilton said it like this. He will, it may not be today, that God himself shall wipe our tears away. Nor hope deferred, may it be yet tomorrow. He'll t take away our cup of earthly sorrow. But precious promise, he has said he will. If we but trust him fully and be still. We too as he may fall and die unknown. And in the place we fell be all unshown. But eyes omnipotent will mark the spot till empires perish and the world's forgot. Then they who bore the yoke and drank the cup, in fadeless glory shall the Lord raise up. God's word is ever good. His will is best. The yoke, the heart all broken, and then rest. One of the things that really stood out to me in that scripture, or in that reading, excuse me, if we but trust him fully and be still. Throughout the word of God, when troubles came upon individuals, continually the Lord spoke into the lives of the children of God and told them to be what? He told them to be still. And in saying that, he was saying, stop moving. Stop trying to make something happen. Part of the problem that we have is, is when we pray and ask God to do something, we don't like being still. And I'm just as guilty as anybody else. And when, when I have prayed something and, and I don't see God moving as quickly as, as I'd like to see God move, then sometimes I feel like I need to be doing something. But that's not true. It's true that I feel like I need to be doing something. But uh, it, it, the truth is, is if I've given it to the Lord, Scripture says, cast your cares upon Him, for He careth for you. 
And when you look into the Greek there, you'll understand that uh, there are two different words for care. One means cast your burdens, your sorrows, and your situations, uh, but you know, upon him, and for he careth. And there it means he has compassion or tenderness towards you. And so he is a loving God. He is a caring God. And if we will let him, he will be a prayer answering God for us. I, I've learned this, and here recently I have been praying a little differently than I have in times past. And it all bases upon this. There is an answer for every prayer. There is an answer. And what I mean by that, now, I, I've heard preachers preach there's a yes and there's a no and there's a maybe. And, and I've heard it preached like that, but and honestly, there is the perfect answer to every prayer. And I simply pray it like this, Lord, I need an answer to this prayer. And whatever your answer is, is the best answer. Whatever your answer to this prayer is, I'm going to leave it in your hands. And that's the trust factor. It's hard to have trust in troubled times. I guess with this week being Father's Day, while I say that, let me just say this. It is Father's Day. We will not have Sunday night service as we didn't on Mother's Day because I want folks to spend time with their fathers. Amen. And honor them. Because I tell you what, life is short. And, and you don't know how much longer you're going to have your father. Now some folks' as dads, they seem like they're just going to live forever. But others, you never know. And, and I just want to, you know, I, if I could be in Oklahoma with my dad, I would be in Oklahoma with my father. And who knows, I may just take off. But, but still, the song I sang tonight is kind of something he put in me as a small child. He sang it often at church, you know, hold to God's unchanging. Because times are filled with swift transition. Things are changing quickly all around us. And you, you don't know today what tomorrow holds. And the troubles of our life that we will be into. We're, we're living in a day and age that's mixed up. Amen? But trouble and prayer are closely related to each other. Anybody ever prayed any troubled prayers before? There's just something about a troubled prayer. It's not a, now I lay me down to sleep. It's not just a going down the list kind of praying. But it's something that hits right here. Because it's either prayed out of stress, weariness, desperation, very good, heartache. And trouble many times leads us to pray. So prayer is of great value to trouble. And trouble often drives men and women of God to pray. Praise God. When 9-11 took place, tragic day in our country's history, the churches that night were packed full with people praying because they felt like you know, this could be it. But there is great value in prayer in a time of trouble. For this we know, prayer often delivers us out of trouble. And yet it gives strength to us to bear our troubles. It ministers comfort to us when we're in trouble. 
and it gives us patience in the midst of our trouble. Amen? And so, troublesome times come upon us. You know, we don't know what tomorrow holds. A man went to the doctor Tuesday, and, and uh, everything's okay. Still the same problem. Stay off the cookies. I try. But you know, when, when there's Oreos in the house... <laughs> I said, Lord, I didn't drink, I didn't smoke, but you had to take away sweets. We looked over my blood work, and, you know, things have changed a little bit, some for the better, because I started doing what they said. Yeah, you like it. It's amazing what you do when you listen. I started adding D3 to my diet. My D3's good. And lots of folks are really, when you take blood work, the D3's low. Take your D3. I encourage you. Man. He said, boy, you're real high. So I guess popping those pills every day like candy's a good thing. And yet, my blood sugar, it's not gotten worse, but it hadn't gotten better. And it's not real bad. But when you look on that chart and you see little red arrow starting to go up, Kidney function is good. But it's increased a little. Protein level. You know, she said there's, there's some things that you better start watching. You know, there's something about when you go to a doctor. When you're looking at this old physical flesh. I was thinking all the way home. You know, I know... I know what I should be doing. I know. I know that I should be eating better. She asked the question. So, Mr. Bumgarner, well, what do you what do you think's a good good meal? And she meant for me in that situation, because if she really wanted the truth, I'd say chicken fried steak, mashed potatoes and gravy, corn on the cob, green beans, dinner rolls, you know, like five or six, with a big old piece of chocolate pie after. That's not what she meant. So I said, grilled chicken, a little spinach salad, a little green bean, maybe some buttered squash, no bread, no potatoes. She said, that sounds like a great meal. I'm thinking, man, that sounds like a terrible meal. But it's a change in me that I have to get a hold of. No one else can do it for me. Yeah, I'm going somewhere with that old analogy about me. Because now I can eat anything I want to. If it's in the kitchen, I can go in and eat it. Doesn't mean it's good for me. And and she she's prescribed medicines and it helps keep my blood sugar where it's supposed to be. But the thing is, is if I started eating better started being more active, started doing what I was supposed to, then I probably wouldn't need any medicine at all. Or need minimal doses. You say, well, how? it's a trouble. I used to wake up and eat anything I want. I used to wake up and get eat a pack of, you know, uh, French toast or pancakes and just pour the syrup on. Now I sit down and look at them like, how much is this going to make my blood sugar go now I got to deal with it. I pray every day, Lord, I thank you for healing my pancreas. Getting those blood sugars right. Getting that insulin level right. I pray it every day. I believe God's going to do it. And I remember him praying at one time, and he said, won't you eat better? Now, the Lord don't talk to y'all like that, but he talks to me like that. You know, you know what you need to be doing, son. Won't you do it? And it's the same sometimes when we're in troubles, in, this, in, in spiritual trouble. There's things we know we should be doing. If we're not spiritual healthy, we're probably not praying. 
And so we go to the house of God, and the Lord begins to speak to us, and he, he tries to get us to our attention to change. And then when that doesn't happen, he brings trouble into our life. Huh? Sometimes we've got to have motivators. I'm starting to get motivated. I, gotta, I want to get down about 25 pounds, and not just so I can be skinny and good looking, because I'm already good looking. Just not skinny. Just ask my wife. But it's internal. And here's the thing. I, you know, my doctor, she says, you know, I, I tell her, well, I feel fine. I feel, I feel good. She says, yeah, that's why they call it the silent killer. I mean, when I was diagnosed with the thing, I didn't even know I had the thing. My, life, my wife wanted to get life insurance. Why are you laughing, Sister Sam? Just got married. She wanted me to be covered so she could retire. I mean, right before I took that test, they came to my office. I drank a big old Dr. Pepper. I hadn't had a Dr. Pepper in about five years till last week when we was up there in Houston. We'd been working on that platform. I snuck one. Oh, it tastes so good. I didn't even know I had it going on. And then they tell her, sorry, we can't insure him. He's got blood issues. You need to send him to a doctor. And the doctor says, well, you... You know, you're not real bad, but you're bad enough. You, you, you need to get it under control. And so trouble starts in your life. And so now you got to think about what you're eating. And, and you know, at first I was just going to do it by diet. I'm going to do it by diet. The first three months, I remember I cut out potatoes and fried things. And I cut out all. It was trouble in my life. Things were, something was different. Something was changing me. And so I was watching everything. And, and, and I was doing good and playing ball every week with the guys. And, and uh, I went in, and I went from a nine down to a seven, all by myself. She was impressed. Well, keep it up. Let's see if we can do it again. And then I came back and was at an eight. Because after a while, you can get comfortable in your situation. And you don't take as much care of it as you once did. You know? And the thing is, is in our prayer life, you know, at first we get, we get uh, things change and troubles come our way and we're, we're going to pray more and we're going to fast. And, and it, for a little while it's like that, but then after a while you begin to accept things and you stop praying about them. And you're not as diligent anymore. You're not as disciplined anymore about praying for what you had been praying about and seeking God. And, you, and you know, uh, it, it's like, I know I got to see my doctor in six months, but there's a six-month period in there, you know, that I don't have to hear her voice. And the thing is, is we want God to do things for us in our times of trouble, but after a while, we don't hear His voice any longer trying to make us change. And we want to do things our way. And troubled prayer, amen, gets you started, but it should be the kind of prayer that keeps you changing. Troubles come to everybody. Man that is born of a woman is a few days and full of trouble. Trouble is common to mankind. There is no exception. It doesn't matter what age you're born into. It does not matter what station of life you're born into whether you're rich or you're poor, whether you're educated or not educated, amen, troubles come to everybody. There were CEOs that died on 9-11. And yet there was probably someone that was the lowest pay grade inside that building that died as well. 
trouble came to both of their families. It didn't skip over them. Troubles are going to come your way. But the important thing to do is, you know, in the day of trouble, in your day of trouble, who are you going to turn to? Who are you going to listen to? Are you going to listen to your own? You know, your own thoughts? I'm in trouble. I need help. My blood sugar was out of whack. I need I had to go to a doctor. I want to get this thing under control. I want to live so I can beat up Jordan's future husband. I may be 60 years old, but I'm going to do my best. Because you know, there's something I got to live for. So there's trouble come upon us. So if I listen to myself, I, I'll say, well, I can get through this on my own. I can do this on my own. Really, I can't. I can't do it on my own. I don't have the willpower. I love to cook. Man, I love it fried. Now I'm learning to grill and bake. Yeah. Learning what rubs are and seasoning and marinades. Because, I mean, growing up as a kid, it was fry that thing up and make some good gravy and you had a meal. Now, if y'all weren't raised like that, I'm sorry. But I can't do it on my own. I have to have someone help me out. But the Lord gave me a help. I really need somebody to be my dietitian. They see me misbehaving, just, you know, have a little shock, something shock me. Yeah, you would enjoy that, wouldn't you? I've got several volunteers know we're in our time of trouble we need somebody else to help us but we need good counsel I mean Job had some help but it wasn't the right kind of help and so in troubled times we need to pray and we need to listen to the Lord and we need to learn to be still Stop being anxious and learn that God is in control and when it's his time, it will all work to perfection. He has the best answer for your situation. There is a false view and, it, and it, people sometimes begin to think that the only time that I need to pray is when troubles are in my life. Or the only time, and it really it's true, the only time we really start paying attention to certain areas of our life is when things begin to happen to us in them. Can I just preach for a little while? Let my marriage start being in trouble, then I'll start paying attention to it. Let my children start misbehaving and acting great, and then I'll start wanting to pay attention to them. Oh, now, now I want to take, now I'm focused on, now, oh, now it's important to me. Now I'm in the altar praying, weeping and crying and asking God to work because before it didn't matter to me, before I do whatever I wanted to do. Let me just put it in language you can understand because of the way I've been teaching tonight. Before I could eat anything I wanted to eat. But now, but now, and now, 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 oh, I want to fix it now. I'm in trouble now, Lord. 
Now, now I need you to answer a prayer for me, Lord. And a lot of times, the only time we reach out to the Lord is in our time of trouble. And then we don't want just a, an answer, you know, we want Him to fix it the way we want Him to fix it. We want Him to do it the way we want it done. Well, this isn't Burger King, and you can't have it your way. He's not Burger King. He's the King of Kings. Amen. And the truth of it is, is that troubled prayers bring us to God so we can know God. Something happened quite funny today. I was sitting in my chair. Jordan, I heard her come pattering down the hallway. Her and her brother had been playing. She just stood there, and I waited. I didn't hear anything. She just stood there. So I finally said, I see you over there, little girl. And that's all she needed. I said, you want to come rock with Dad? Nope. And she turned around. And I heard her run back to the room and said, I heard her say, I told Dad on you. She no more toad on him. Than, but she walked out. She made her presence known. She didn't say a thing. She didn't say Bubba did anything. She just stood there and worked the time. And that's how some of us approach the Lord. Huh? We come into His presence. And, and this always baffles me. People that have troubles, they'll come to the altar and do this. And you leave with the same trouble that you came to the altar with. Because you refuse to open your mouth and talk to the Lord. Now, I, I don't want to offend anybody, but you know what? Silent prayers. Yes, God knows your heart. God knows the thoughts of the mind. But blind Bartimaeus had to speak out to Jesus to get his answer. I believe the Lord likes it when we submit our wills. Well, I don't want anybody to hear me. You're in a troubled place. What do you care what people hear? What do you care what people say? Man, he was down there boo-hooing and sobbing. So what? I'm in trouble. I'm in a place of trouble and I need to touch God. And you can judge me all you like, but... God will hear me and God will answer my prayer. And I'll get up from there knowing that, hey, no matter what happens, I've touched God. And God's heard my prayer. The thing about Job is Job was handpicked by God to make a point. And sometimes trouble may come in your life through hell, through sickness, through many different things. Because God's trying to make a point in your life to the world. Amen. I don't know why mom's battled cancer for the last 14 years. But I'm encouraged because the Lord's been using her as a witness. I was in a restaurant with a woman that had a, a, a cancer shirt, t-shirt on the other day. And, and I, I encouraged her. I said, yeah, my mom's been battling this. 14 years she said well I've been battling 17 honey you tell mama just keep fighting and so trouble is, is going to find every one of us and trouble when it comes in our life typically creates change Trouble is God's servant doing God's will. You ever think of it like that? We don't like to think of our trials as God's will. 
we don't like to think of trials and things that come into our families as, as things that God allows. But God allows them. He's working on us. Stick with me. It'll be over soon. But it is. Trouble is under the control of who? I don't know Bible study and I want to talk back with you. The Lord, Almighty God, His purpose in perfecting His saints. God knew you when you woke up this morning. He knows when you wake up and you're thinking, boy, I don't feel like getting out of this bed. I, I, I didn't sleep good last night. I'm battling sinuses and drainage. And, and I woke up with a sore throat or dry mouth and my legs are aching and my head's aching. Huh? My right leg spoke to my left leg and said, get up. And the left leg said, no, you first. And the right leg said, well, look, it's on your side of the bed, so you have to go first. And that's when it starts. And you, you break God help me through today. You get that first cup of coffee. And then you thank the Lord for creating the coffee bean. <laughs> you start feeling some, some mobility in your body, and you get up and you start going. Start fulfilling the will of God in your life. God does not take pleasure in our pain. I want to make sure somebody understands that. God doesn't take pleasure in our pain. He doesn't take pleasure when people do wrong. But he is compassionate enough that when we are in our time of trouble, and he is using these experiences to work on us. We sing songs about the potter's will. We read scriptures about the potter's will. And if we believe that everything is under his divine control, then we have to trust him that everything has a purpose. Come on. There's things in our family's lives we know about, and we wonder, Lord, how could you let this happen? But God says, I have a purpose in this. And you know, missionary Brad Shrek, guys, the oldest brother, he, he's, uh, he's going to be coming through here sometime, fixing to go to Puerto Rico, leaving Honduras, going to Puerto Rico to be a missionary there. But his daughter was diagnosed with uh, some type of back uh, ailment and, and uh, she could hardly walk and she was her inflammation and just very very severe and she ends up coming home from Honduras and they're in Houston and they're not able to travel they're not able to deputize it and they're going to a doctor and he'll probably come and tell the story a whole lot better but through all her trial she begins to witness to this doctor who was a cat at one time had been almost an atheist. She ends up visiting church on Friends Day with this young lady. Receives the Holy Ghost. Gets baptized. And God's working in her life. You never know what the pain that we go through is fulfilling. First of all, it's getting you to a place to pray. And that's the thing about troubles. Amen. They make you pray. Sister Leanne, I, I hope you don't mind me. I'm not calling you out. I'm not trying to pick on you. I know your stepdad's battling. It's a tumor, right? Is it cancer? It's a tumor. I just want to make sure I get my facts right. Now, I know that you've prayed for your stepdad before, prayed for your salvation. But it's something about this situation, Stephanie. I promise you, there hasn't been a day gone by in the last month or whatever that we found out of that you haven't really got down and started praying for him and your mom and their salvation because that brings it home. That brings eternity home to us. That brings the commission home. Hey, I've got to be praying for them. Hey, 
if they're not, especially if they're not. But God's been working miracles. First, they weren't going to be able to operate. We began to pray. They were just going to do chemotherapy. But now, now they're saying, hey, you know what? We think we can do the surgery. So God is starting to undertake. And you know what he said? He told his wife not to worry. And correct me if I get this wrong. But he told his wife, you know, you don't have to worry. I know them Pentecostals are praying for me. So he knows there's something a little bit more when those Pentecostals pray. So troubles come in your life. But Pentecostals, isn't that the time that we really need to step up and be apostolic Pentecostals? To pray for miracles? Hello? Shouldn't we be the ones to have faith to go to deeper prayer? Come on, sometimes God letting things happen in your life because he's not satisfied with your prayer life. Hello. I better say that again. Sometimes God lets things happen. He's not satisfied with your prayer life. He's not satisfied with your 10 minutes in the morning that you get up and give. He wants an hour. He wants you to get in communication with him. He wants you to call out upon his name. Because I'm as guilty as anybody else. I can get to praying, and if I don't feel like I'm going no higher on the ceiling, and after a while I'll just say, well, thank you, Lord, for letting me have a good day. I like to pray off a list because I can pray down my list. And Lord, if I don't do anything else, I've prayed for folks today. But that's not what he wants. I'm totally. And he, he, he lets things happen, you know. Keep me praying. Keep me on my face. Keep me where I need to be. He knew what forces of nature fulfill his will. He called them his great arm. In scripture he says the locust, the cankerworm, the caterpillar are his servants. You know what, Lord, I thank you for using diabetes as your servant, servant in my life. That's what I'm going to look at. It'll make me pray. It'll make me change my lifestyle. It'll make me do better. And sometimes troubles come into your world to help you. But we have two attitudes. We can either submit our hands to God and pray and seek His face. Or we can set our face like a stone. And say, Lord, it doesn't matter what winds blow or what things happen. You're not going to change me. But the scripture says it like this. He calls it chastening. Whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth. And scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. Punishment does not belong to this life. Too many times that's what we feel like. Like we're being punished. We're not being punished. Maybe being chastened, corrected, disciplined, being told, hey, get a grip, set up, come on. If you're a parent of any type, you know what I'm talking about. We're not being punished, but we're being chastened. This is not something that's going to endure forever. But it's a moment of time that God can mold our character as he did with Job. Job, you're a good man. You're an upright man, but you're not a righteous man. And Job, you think you're a righteous man. But I'm going to work on you, Job, until you identify and say, I'm not righteous. And when you read the book of Job, all through all the dissertation that takes place, finally, Job gets to the place that says, Only you are 
righteous. And God says, good, you got it. Now pray for your friends, lest I kill them. Huh? But the whole thing is, Job, I'm putting you through this. Think about all those days that he sat there with boils on his body, you know, scraping them away with a piece of pottery, and he's in ashes and sock, sackcloth, and, he, and he's sitting there in, in, the, in the clothes. I mean, he was a wealthy man. He used to have everything, and now he's got nothing. Not even got a, He doesn't even have his health sitting there. You know, why don't you curse God and die? Hey, my Redeemer liveth. What's your purpose? And we don't see the whole story, but those days he said to him, Lord, I don't know what your purpose is and all that, all this, but I'm going to praise you anyhow. I look to the north, I look to the south, I look to the east, I look to the west, but this one thing I know, my Redeemer lives. I, I'm, I don't know where he's at. And sometimes you're not going to know where he's at. That's our problem. We want to have a handle on it. We want to micromanage God. We want to know exactly where he's at and how he's working in our lives. And he says, look, I was around here before you were ever born. You're not going to be able to keep a hold of me because I'm a spirit. I'm like the wind. I go wherever I want to go. I do whatever I want to do. So stop trying to figure it out and trust me. Stand still. No, it requires a response, Brother Pumgarner. I've got to do something. I've got... No, you don't! I mean, we used to sing the song back in the day, you know. Stand still and let the Lord fight your battles. Hold your peace. I'm not talking about your Smith & Wesson. Some of y'all got that. But you know what? When we allow God, and I'm just, I'm going to try to, I, I've got a whole lot more stuff to talk about. But when we hold our peace and be still and trust the Lord, it, Paul was saying, you know, I've been through great peril. I've been through tribulation. I've been through perils of water. I've been through beatings. I've been through, through the brethren. I've been misused in all kinds of ways. But if I'm going to glory, I'm going to glory in Him. If I'm going to glory, it's going to be the fact that, you know, even though I've been tested and tried, I always turn to Him. And He was the Lord of my situation. He was the Lord of my life. And even though I wanted to do different things, because understand this, when you take trouble in your own hands, it's your trouble. And the consequences that come with it. You can't blame God. Hello. Now you say, but isn't there forgiveness? Sure there's forgiveness. God forgives sin. But when you didn't hear the voice of the Lord and you took matters in your own hand, then whatever comes is not on God. See, that's what we like to do. We like to blame God. Well, I left the church because I was praying about something. And, 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 you know, it was a bad situation. And the pastor, he just didn't handle it right. And a lot of times when I hear that, I want to say, well, what did the pastor tell you to do? And what did you do? Because I can almost guarantee you in every situation... The pastor was probably, probably telling them something they didn't want to hear. Something they didn't want to do. Because we don't want to suffer. 
and be still. Come on, it's like when somebody gets pneumonia. And I'm as guilty as anybody of this. When I start feeling sick, my favorite thing to do is take nitrogen. I don't say that jokingly. I take it. It knocks me out. And I get a good night's sleep. But you can't treat pneumonia with NyQuil. Just a thought. And lots of times we have pneumonia type problems that we bring to God and God is saying, I've got the medicine, but you're going to have to go to the hospital. And we say, well, look, I don't want to go to the hospital right now, so I'll just take this bottle of NyQuil. I'm not preaching anybody besides myself. I'm, a, I'm stubborn like that. You know, I'll, I'll feel better after a while. But after a week. <laughs> and I can't breathe. <laughs> huh? Thank you, ought to go to the hospital. Yeah. You want to take some more NyQuil? I probably would, but. I'm no longer afraid of shots, so I can't say it's because I don't want to get a shot. I remember a time I was sick, like, I mean, I was sick, I was sick, and I was at work and I was sick. And I set up an appointment. Finally, I went to a clinic, the Deer Park Family Clinic, and I went in there, and this doctor said, Well, you know, you've got this something, I don't know, flu or whatever. I'm going to give you this shot. And this, he gave me that shot. He said, Just start feeling better in a couple of days. By that afternoon, brand new person like why didn't I do this before I've been on NyQuil for two weeks and when I say NyQuil I don't take it by the dosage and I know you are all sanctified folks and you follow directions but I I grew up you know with a, if a little bit will do you good a little more won't Heard. But you know what? Often the Lord's telling us, be still, let me work. Be still, let me be God. You're in a troubled spot. Pray. Let me let me take care of it. But if you're going through something, I'm just talking about troubled prayers right now. If you're in a, a situation, you've got something happening in your life, be careful before you move too quickly. Are you hearing, Pastor, tonight? Because troubles are going to come in your life. And we are quick to react to troubles. Especially when they personally attack us. We're quick to react. But if we would just be still and pray and seek the Lord and ask Him to take care of it, And allow Him to be God. And allow Him to work in our situation. If there's one thing He's taught me is, if you'll give it to me, I can take care of it. But if you try to take care of it, son, I will let you handle it. And the thing is, is the more I try to handle it, the worse it seems to get. Because I'm going to handle it out of my human emotion. I'm going to handle it out of my bitterness that I'm feeling. I'm going to handle it out of the anger that I'm feeling. I'm going to handle it out of the resentment that I'm feeling. But down the road, I look back and say, why? Why couldn't have I have done that a little bit better? Lord, why, Lord, you know, why did you step in? I tried and you told me not to. I told you to be still and let me work on it, but you wouldn't do it. Folks, sometimes troubles come our way. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sore? Is anything going to separate us from the love of Christ? Not these things. 
But what about your love for him? Can these things separate your love from him? If a tribulation comes into your life, would that separate your love for the Lord? What about a distressful situation or persecution? Troubles, violence. Are these things going to separate you from the Lord? Or are they going to turn you to the Lord? Because his love has never ceased for us. But our love. Him and the things of God. I'm coming to a close tonight. I, I can keep going. I can talk and I will next week about the three words. The three words in this process. Temptation. Trial. And trouble. And the differences between them. Because there is differences between these three things. But folks, when you have troublesome times in your life, that is the time to turn to the Lord. Seek Him with all your heart. And be still. Be still. And know that He is God. Troubled prayers do not require our action. Troubled pr prayers require us to give them over to the Lord and wait on Him. Can you stand to your feet tonight? Lord Jesus, I thank you for being such an awesome, awesome God. And I know, Lord, that you are working upon this church family. Troublesome times, Lord, come upon us all. And I am praying, God, that when troubles come my way, instead of reacting quickly, Lord, that I wait upon you to see what you're going to do. I'm going to trust in you, Lord. I'm going to believe in you, Lord. I may be shipwrecked in the Spirit, but, oh, Lord, I know that you've given me a way to make it to shore. I may get to shore and get snake bit. But, Lord, I thank you for the fire that I can put the snake into. Because, Lord, I know through my trials and my situations, Lord, you're going to receive all the glory. It's going to be a witness and a testimony unto you, Lord, what you can do. That those in the world will say, how in the world did you ever make it through that? The Lord was with me. He heard my cry. And I waited on him. I can't believe that happened in your life. Oh, but you don't know the kind of God I serve. He had to make some changes in me. I'm not who I used to be. I went through a rough time and God changed me. But because I made it through, now I have favor with God. And I pray that for this church family. Lord, I thank you for the rest of this week. I pray, God, you keep your hand of protection on everyone as they travel. There's still some weather, Lord, that could affect us, and I'm asking you, Lord, to keep us safe. Bring us back here Sunday morning as we celebrate Father's Day and the men that we call Dad. And for that, I give you glory and honor. Can the church say amen? Thank you for listening tonight. Be careful going home. God bless you.